Hey, what's up everyone? Manesh, the Psychedelic Scientist here. Welcome to my channel where I provide easy to understand but non-superficial discussions of the latest in psychedelic science. In today's video, I'm going to be giving a comprehensive introduction to the serotonin 2A receptor, which is the most important brain receptor for psychedelic drug effects. To start off this video, first let me give a basic introduction on what a brain receptor is and what it means for psychedelics to activate them. If you already know this stuff, look in the description below for the timestamps and you can hop to the next section. So the brain is this extremely complex organ that's composed of around 100 billion brain cells or neurons and each neuron has up to 10,000 connections with other neurons. But the interesting thing is, except for a small minority, neurons don't actually physically touch each other. They actually communicate at these junctures called synapses where parts of one neuron become very close to parts of another neuron. And how neurons communicate at these synapses is through chemicals. So one neuron will send chemicals to another neuron. And the most important class of chemicals here are neurotransmitters that you've probably heard of such as serotonin, dopamine, and then there's glutamate, acetylcholine, and a whole bunch of others. And the thing is, for a receiving neuron to be affected by a neurotransmitter, it has to have receptors for it. And how we can understand this is that neurotransmitters function as keys where its receptors are locks. And so a given receiving neuron only has a certain subset of receptor types on it and therefore it can only be affected by a certain subset of neurotransmitters. And so let's bring this back to psychedelics. So classic psychedelics such as LHD, psilocybin or DMT act primarily on the serotonin system in the brain and they actually act as if they're serotonin at certain serotonin receptors. Some people think that psychedelics acutely increase serotonin in the brain, but that's not really true and there's actually evidence showing that they decrease serotonin in the cortex. So again, what they do is they act as if they're serotonin and activate particular receptors. And in terms of the serotonergic system, they activate multiple receptors. They activate the serotonin 1A receptor, 2A, 2C, 6, 7, and they activate all of these to different degrees. At this point, you might be asking, why is the serotonin 2A receptor in particular often emphasized? And that's a pretty easy question to answer because there have been multiple studies in humans and rats where they give a drug that specifically blocks serotonin 2A receptors and they found that that blocks psychedelic drug effects. So if you take one of these drugs such as Contanserin and then take LSD after it, you won't trip at all and even your brain will look exactly like somebody who got a placebo. And in other studies, they found that this wasn't the case when you block other serotonin receptors or other receptors in general. And so this is why the serotonin 2A receptor seems to be specifically important for the effect of psychedelic drugs. And so where in the brain exactly are serotonin 2A receptors expressed the most? So what I'm showing here is an image where this is a map of serotonin 2A receptor densities. And this map was created using something called positron emission tomography or PET imaging. And basically in order to create this image, what they did was they injected people with small non-harmful amounts of a radioactive substance which binds specifically to serotonin 2A receptors. So then after injecting this compound, you put people in a PET scanner and it's able to image the locations of this chemical in the brain while people are awake and without opening up their skull. And so in this image, the areas in red are the areas with the highest expression of serotonin 2A receptors. And if you know any neuroanatomy or if you're familiar with the default mode network, you'll realize that these red areas are essentially the entire default mode network. And this is notable because these regions within the default mode network are among the most interconnected in the entire brain. And they have the most influence on the whole brain's activity. One way of understanding this is that these are hubs in the context of the entire brain. As an analogy, if we think of airport hubs, there are certain airports that get much more air traffic than others. And if you were to specifically disrupt those specific airports, global air traffic will be also be disrupted. And so we can say that serotonin 2A receptors seem to be selectively located on the hubs or the busiest airports of the brain. And this therefore sets them up for a wide ranging influence on brain function, which makes sense given the wide ranging effects of psychedelics on our experience. All right, so next let's dive into the meat of this video and talk about what exactly happens to neurons when the serotonin 2A receptor becomes activated. Before I dive into this, I just want to say a note about serotonin. So serotonin actually in and of itself doesn't increase or decrease the activity of neurons. What a serotonin is, is a neuromodulator, which means that it affects neurons by modulating the release of other neurotransmitters. In terms of the serotonin 2A receptor, it mainly modulates two specific neurotransmitters, 
These are glutamate and GABA. So glutamate is actually the main excitatory neurotransmitter of the brain, which means that it increases the probability that a neuron will activate. In contrast, GABA is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter of the brain, which means it reduces the probability that a given neuron will fire. All of this taken into account, serotonin 2A activation actually releases more glutamate than GABA. So this means it has the net effect of increasing the activation of neurons. More specifically, what it actually does is it makes particular neurons more sensitive to the inputs of other neurons. For example, if you threw a neuron in a dish that had receptors for the serotonin 2A receptor, and then you put some LSD on it, and then you stimulated it, it would spike a lot more and activate a lot more relative to before LSD was put on it. And so it seems to be the case that serotonin 2A activation via glutamate makes neurons more sensitive to being activated. And another interesting thing here is that usually when glutamate is released, it'll stay at that one given synapse and affect the receiving neuron and then get cleared and sucked up by the neuron that released it. However, after serotonin 2A receptor activation, there's something called a glutamate spillover where the glutamate spills out of that specific synapse and diffuses into the environment around it and affects multiple neurons in the vicinity. So therefore, this glutamate that's released by one neuron will affect a whole set of neurons and all of them will start to fire a lot more and they all become more sensitive to being fired. And also, what's more is that the sustained diffuse glutamate release leads different neurons to fire in different patterns. And so this leads to this kind of disorganization where neurons which maybe were grouped together before are now firing in various different ways in an erratic fashion. So all in all, to summarize this, we can say that serotonin 2A receptor activation via glutamate release, one, leads neurons to become more sensitive to the inputs of other neurons, two, makes neurons fire on the whole a lot more, and three, leads neurons to fire in this kind of erratic way that's out of sync with each other and other neurons nearby. And although we don't quite know how, yet at least, this activity at a local level of a single neuron or a few thousand or a hundred thousand neurons seems to be what leads to the changes we see at the entire brain in terms of increased interconnectivity between brain regions and also increased entropy. And also, and of course this is speculative as well, this increased sensitivity of neurons to being activated and their hyperactivation might relate to the amplification of consciousness that people experience while under the influence of a psychedelic. One last thing I want to mention is that increased glutamate release is actually directly linked to increased neuroplasticity. So one of the main mechanisms that serotonins lead to neuroplasticity is through this process where they activate the serotonin 2A receptor, this leads to more glutamate release, and this leads to more activation of glutamate AMPA receptors, which have been shown in a lot of studies to boost neuroplasticity. There are other mechanisms through which serotonin 2A activation might lead to neuroplasticity as well, but that's a topic for another video. So that's everything that I want to cover in this video. I realize this was a bit more technical than my previous ones. So if anything was unclear or you want me to clarify or dive deeper into anything, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. And I also want to say I'm going to follow up this video with another video on the serotonin 2A receptor, this time talking about its functional role and behavior. I'll be exploring questions such as, why do we have a serotonin 2A system in the first place? What is the main reason that this might have evolved? What role does it play outside of the action of psychedelics? And so in my next video, I'm going to be exploring these questions and looking at theories that have been proposed. And with that, please hit that like button to show me some love. And please subscribe if you haven't already for more videos on the latest in psychedelic science.